So once again, the latest out of Barcelona, this attack happening just a couple of hours ago, a white van mounting a curb in a very popular tourist area. Police confirming one person was killed. As many as 32 may have been injured, but the details are still coming in from the scene. Police have cordoned off the area. They are calling this a terrorist attack. Okay, Marco Vincenzino is a global risk expert and the director of Global Strategy Project. Uh, tell me a little bit about your thoughts this afternoon now that they have called this a terrorist attack. You, know, you broadly speaking, you break it down into three broad categories, possibly more arguably. First one being, in this case, it may appear to be a lone wolf. A lone wolf radicalized online, loner individual, different reasons, some internal, some external influences uh, that may decide to take on an attack. And once again, to get a truck to ram into a crowd doesn't cost much money. It's a fairly cheap way of doing it, and you can get you can get global headlines. Uh, so that's sort of the second category would be individuals who may Europeans possibly who may go out into the field and have trading, uh, direct involvement in the conflicts in Syria, Iraq, come back home on their own and set up operations, decide to do something, and then third you have these individuals, perhaps Europeans or individuals from the region who may have gone to Europe with direct uh, guidance and leadership and manage directly from the region itself. My first impression is when I see something like this, it follows a certain pattern. The pattern being, once again, it seems to be more of a lone, a lone wolf or maybe one or two or three individuals on their own uh, inspired uh, to do something like this. And what will happen is that once this attack takes place, you know, individuals back at the more formal structure in ISIS back in Syria, Iraq will claim credit for it, saying that, you know, it was a martyr or it was uh, one of our soldiers. Uh, really, they had no direct contact with the person, but they'll claim the fact that they inspired that individual and claim credit for it. So I think it would be more in the first category uh, at the present time. Once again, I'm speculating. We don't have the facts fully, but it would seem to be more of an individual or one or two that an inspire a, a lone wolf uh, that's been radicalized one way, either online or through various means. This is a whole new world that you know, we're getting accustomed to right now, particularly in Europe. North America, obviously, there's, I think there's, there's much more, there's been far more results and achievements in terms of combating this. Ge geography are, obviously plays a part. Europe, you know, in recent years, you had the flood of refugees over one, two million coming from the Middle East, crossing from Turkey into Greece and throughout Europe. Many of these individuals, they don't know who they are. Or, once again, homegrown individuals being inspired by headlines, watching the news, and wanting to be part of something that they in their lives may not be sort of empty internally, and they feel to be part of a broader global movement. Yeah, those that are disenfranchised, looking for some kind of sense of belonging or some purpose. Let me ask you this. We've talked to a number of security experts on the show today, some of whom say this is, yes, the new normal, the heartbreaking normal. Some are saying uh, that we can expect more. What are your thoughts? I mean, this was years in the making. This is not overnight. When we watch the evening news, it appears to be something, you know, obviously it's immediate, you grab headlines, but this has been years in the making. It even goes before the war in Syria. This, this form of ideology uh, obviously would have deep religious elements, you know, jihadism. Arguably, that term has even debated itself. This has been years in the making. So you may defeat an al-Qaeda, you can defeat an ISIS, but this will morph into different forms over time. And this will be part of this will take place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not something that can be defeated just through conventional means. This is an uh, online front, a psychological front. Uh, there's several layers to this conflict. You use the term asymmetrical. Probably it's a broad term, but it explains the complexity of this war. It's not conventional, traditional uh, conflict. Right, right. This is on various fronts. Okay. Vincenzo, you know, uh, Marco Vincenzo, you know, we're going to leave it there. We've got some new information coming in, but I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.